Kathleen Trilligan was not the only person to wait in vain for a sailor gone out to sea, nor do ghosts appear only to adults. Not too long ago, a young family moved into a house in St. John's only to inherit a ghostly babysitter as part of the bargain. The Murphy's firstborn, Madeline, was a beautiful little baby girl, and they gave her one of the nicest bedrooms in the house. A beautiful sunny room overlooking the St. John's Narrows, which connects the harbor to the open sea. It wasn't long, however, before the Murphys got the impression that someone else was helping to take care of little Madeline. But they could never catch a glimpse of this babysitter. Like many babies, little Madeline would wake from her sleep and cry for attention. Before mom or dad could get into the room, the baby would be giggling happily, as if being tickled or talked to. Mr. and Mrs. Murphy would enter the room to find little Madeline freshly tucked into her blankets, and the toys which had been dropped out of her crib replaced at her side. But try as they might, this ghostly babysitter could never be seen until one particularly bright day when the sun shone brilliantly through the window and lit upon a most faint glimmer of a young girl about 12 years old sitting beside the window looking out to sea. Finally the story could be pieced together. It was a sailor by the name of Power who had built the house for his family. He too left one spring with a vow to return in the fall. He charged his young daughter, Jeannie, to help her mother with the new baby, now just a couple of months old. But young Jeannie fell ill that summer and spent the last of her days gazing out the window and through the narrows, hoping for a sight of her father's ship. But her father was not to return in time. Little Jeannie has been waiting ever since. But she and Madeline have been friends for a number of years now. Young people often see ghosts. Adults may think it's just the young mind inventing their fantasies. Except those adults who have been the child who saw the ghost. You know how some people don't believe in ghosts? Well, I do, because I've seen one. There was a haunted house in the neighborhood where I grew up. A woman had been murdered in that house. All the kids around the block said that her ghost was still there. That's why people never lived in that house for very long. There's always a for sale sign out in front. Family would move in for a while, but they would move out again before we could get to know who they were. Us kids knew why, though. I was walking home from Jennifer's place down the road, and I had to pass this house on my way home, just like I did dozens of times before. It was empty again. The last family moved out really fast a few weeks before, and no new people had moved in yet. I was wondering how long the house would be empty this time, and I was also wondering how long the next family would be in the place before they took off. I was passing by this time, and something, I don't know what it was, made me look up at the window. There she was. She was a young lady with a lonely look on her face, and she was standing at the window brushing her hair. I could hardly believe my eyes. I ran home really fast, but I never told Mom why I was so scared. I walked past that house lots of times after. I never saw her again, though. Most of the time, I'm kind of trying not to look, because I sort of hope I don't see her again. But, but you know, know what? what? I think she's still there, because just the other day, I saw a for sale sign in front of the house. Funny thing is, there was a light on in the upstairs bedroom. 
I thought that family moved out last week. Kitty Vitty is a small fishing village tucked away next to the largest city of Newfoundland. There was a house in an area called the Forest. None would go near it. They say the ghost of Samuel Bingwell haunts the place. I lived in that house. I tended to Sam Bingwell and his niece, Rosanna, and things were good. He paid me well and seemed to have money. Well, he did have money, but one night, that all came to a horrible end. They said they were Marines looking for deserters. They searched the ground floor, took Mr. Bingwell upstairs. You know, 20 minutes later, they came down, went out. But when I went upstairs, they'd killed him. I found him in a pool of blood. Rosanna was beside herself. She went to the authorities. There was one ship's company that came under suspicion, but Rosanna didn't recognize anyone from that ship. The house in the forest was abandoned, but not entirely empty. Locals were not near it. Their strange, flickering lights were seen. There were sounds, moans from within. And some said it was old man Bingwell's ghost wandering the forest, looking for his killers, looking for his money. Rosanna moved to Massachusetts. She married, lived happily, for a while. Then one day she got a letter from an old friend in St. John's, and then in the letter there was talk of the tragedy at the house in the forest, and that brought back bad memories. Her husband, though, reacted to it as well. He became distraught, which surprised Rosanna. Her husband then left, saying he had to go away, but that if anything, anything should happen to him, Rosanna should open his strong box and read the papers. His premonition was just. He died three days after he left home. Rosanna read the contents of the box and to her shock, she realized that her husband was one of the two men who had killed her uncle that night. In the letter, he said he'd kept the money in hopes of getting it back to its rightful owner, Rosanna. Also in the box was her uncle's will. He left her everything, and he wished Rosanna would live in the house in the forest. With the return of Rosanna, her daughter Rosie, and the stolen money, Bingwell's spirit haunted the earth no more. His ghost was at peace. Kelly's Island in Conception Bay is named after one of the most notorious pirates that ravaged the seas of Newfoundland in the early 18th century. I am Alphonsus John Kelly an Irish buccaneer out of the British Navy. The press gangs forced me into the Navy at age 16. I finally deserted them off the coast of Newfoundland and put together the fiercest group of men you'd ever had the pleasure of meeting before you died. This island, soon to be named Kelly's Island, thank you very much, was to be the base of operations for my cutthroat attacks on the supply ships that served the British fishing fleets off the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. Besides me own men, the only people who saw my headquarters were the poor old blighters who carried the booty from their plundered ships to my camps. But of course, 
They never lived to tell anybody about it, now did they? Now, the British Navy weren't too pleased about my roaring success, of course. They hunted me down and finally confronted me in a terrific sea battle off the coast of my island. Kelly's ship was attacked and destroyed by a British frigate. That would be the end of him. Or would it? For it is worth noting that no one has ever really lived on Kelly's island since. Very few will stay there after dark. Perhaps a spirit as savage as Alphonsus John Kelly never really does die. Soon after Kelly's death, the locals began to tell about a spirit on the island. These stories have continued to this day. Only a very few years ago, some foolish girls tried camping on Kelly's island. They had spent a delightful warm summer day on the island and had found a perfect place, or so they thought, to make their camp. Shortly after bedding down for the evening, however, their encounters began. They were awoken suddenly by a terrific crash and a flame that rushed through their camp. The girls ran out of their tent and away from the camp quickly. Once safe, they looked back for an explanation of the noise and the fire. The evidence led them to only one conclusion. Their lantern had been thrown at the tent and had exploded into flame. Thrown by whom? They could never tell. Ah, the girls moved restlessly throughout the island that night. The night had turned dreadfully cold and misty. They knew they were being followed, and they sang and they prayed and they talked nervously in an effort to keep whoever or whatever it was from coming any closer. Now, once the night had passed, the girls thought they would be safe. They waited, almost patiently, to be picked up off the island and brought back to Topsail Shore. But before they were to be rescued, the spirit who had confronted them by night was to confront them by day. Looking up from the beach, the girls saw a huge figure in a strange light, looking back down at them from the high ground. Was it the pirate they'd heard of? The one who, when alive, had not let anyone escape the shores of Kelly's Island? Whoever it was, was making sure that the girls would never come back, by day or by night. Pirate ghosts. Alphonsus John Kelly himself is said to haunt this beach. Two brothers spent a couple of very uncomfortable nights searching for treasure here. They were finally scared off by a tall, dark figure with glowing black eyes. We should try it sometime. No treasure has been found yet. But plenty will take you out to Kelly's Island. Precious few will stay with you to look. <laughs> 